concavity in the second derivative test. Here in this section, we want to determine what it means for a function to have concavity, to be able to find the points of inflection, and then, if possible, to use the second derivative test to determine the relative extrema. First, concavity. Concavity, concavity denotes the curvature of a function on a particular interval. Um, let f be a differentiable um, function on some interval, open interval i, then the graph of f is said to concave upward on i when f prime is increasing on the interval, and the function concaves downward on i when f is decreasing on the interval. Here are some examples. Uh, I think of concavity as a cup, so if the concavity is upward, then the cup is um, sitting upward. If the concavity is downward, then the cup is upside down. How do you test for concavity? You find the second derivative. You set the second derivative equal to zero, solve for x. And then you test the, the intervals uh, on that, uh, uh, that you have by dividing up the number line based on this point uh, when f double prime of x equal to zero. And then from there, uh, you test those intervals, whether they be positive or negative. If the interval is positive, then the function concaves upward on that interval. If the, uh, the sign for that particular interval is negative, then the interval is said to concave downward on that interval. The point of inflection is simply uh, the point where the uh, the function shifts concavity. If the concavity goes from upward to downward or downward to upward, then at that point where the concavity change is said to be the point of inflection. If, if concavity does not change at a particular point, then there's no point of inflection at that particular point. So you can see here that the function is concaving upward, then it concaves downward as a point of inflection. Uh, in between and likewise here. How do you find the point of inflection? Simply the uh, the point whereby you set the second derivative equal to zero then those values of x are said to be the, the um, possible uh, point of inflection. Let's look at some problems now and by the way uh, very neat theorem, the second derivative test, which simply says this, that uh, um, you find the, the critical points from the uh, first derivative. You plug in the critical points from the first derivative into the second derivative. If the second derivative is positive, that means it concaves upward, so you have a minimum. If the second derivative at that critical point that you got from f prime of zero, if that c plugged into the second derivative, uh, you get negative. That means that the concave, uh, the concavity is downward, then you have a relative maximum at that point. If the, uh, if f double prime at c equal to zero, then the test fails, and you have to resort back to the first derivative test. So here we want to find the point of inflection and then discuss the concavity. So first we find f prime of x. So we get 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. <coughs> We solve here for um, for x when you set this function equal to zero. This implies that we have, if you factor out a three, we get x squared minus four x plus four. So this is three times x minus two times x minus 2. 
So x equal to 2. is our critical point. And we find f double prime. This gives us 6x uh, minus 12. <coughs> and so if that be the case, now here if we plug in um, x to be 2, get zero. We're not asked to uh, find the um, uh, the extrema based on the second derivative test, but if we were using the second derivative test, it would fail here, right? But he, we're asked to find the, uh, the concavity and the points of inflection. So what we do is we set the second derivative equal to zero, So that implies that we have 6x minus 12 equal to 0, x is equal to 2. And so now what we do is we build the number line based on uh, the second derivative being set to equal 0 of those x values. So we get negative infinity to 2, then from 2 to positive infinity. Here we test the second derivative. So a value for x less than uh, 2, if we plug that there, say for example, <coughs> if you plugged in uh, the number 0, any negative number, we get negative. Plug in a number bigger than 2, here we get positive. So what this is telling us that is that the uh, the function has concavity that's upward from negative infinity to 2 and it has um, I'm sorry uh, concavity that's downward the negative I'm sleepy uh, because of the, neg the, the negative sign the concavity is downward from negative infinity to 2 and then the concavity is upward from 2 to positive infinity And now since the concavity shifts at 2, then we have a point of inflection. We need to find f of 2 plus 2 to the third minus 6 times 2 to be squared plus 12 times 2. And that gives you 8. So the point 2 comma 8 is our point of inflection. Let's look at the next one. F prime of x is equal to 4 times 1 half. So we get 2x to the third plus 6x squared. We set f prime equal to 0. That implies that, take this term here, I'm going to do some factoring as I go. Factor out 2x squared, we have left x plus 3 is equal to 0. This implies x equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 3. Or our critical points, it does not seem that we even need them. The emphasis is on f double prime of x for concavity in the point of inflection. So, didn't mean to waste any time there. I kind of get used to first derivative, find the critical points, second derivative, find the um, possible uh, point of, or points of inflection. But anyway, this is 6x squared 
plus 12x. If you set here, if we set f double prime equal to 0, this implies that we have 6 x, I'm going to factor that, six, this is 6x six squared plus 12x, factor out 6x, I have x plus 2 set to equal to 0, this implies that x equal to 0, x equal to negative 2. So now I test the number line, I partition the number line based on these uh, values from the second derivative. Here we examine f double prime. Now I'm looking at the second derivative 6x times x plus 2. Plug in a number here for this is f double prime. F double prime. Okay. So plug in a number on the interval from negative infinity to negative two. Let's say negative five. It's negative times negative. We get positive. A number between negative two and zero. Let's take negative one. We get uh, here negative and positive. So it's negative, and then over here we get positive. So so notice here that the concavity changes at negative 2 and it also changes at uh, x equal to 0. So this, you know, in terms of concavity, up, down, and all around. Now, what is f of negative 2 and then f of 0, where f of 0 is 0, then f of negative 2 is 1 half times negative 2 to the fourth is 16 plus 2 times, uh, this is negative 8. 2 to the third is 8 times 2 is 16 is negative. So that gives us negative 8. So the points of inflection negative 2, negative 8. And then zero comma zero, and so we found concavity, and we also found the point or points of inflection. Well, what about this one? We find f prime. So this is the product rule. So the derivative of the first is one times the second. plus the first times the derivative of the second gives us one half times x plus three to the negative one half. So there we get f prime is equal to the square root of x plus three plus x all over two times the square root of x plus three. Since we have to find the second derivative then I'm just going to rewrite the first derivative. I'm going to add these two fractions. So I have to multiply to the square root of x plus 3. Uh, 2 times the square root of x plus 3 divided by 2 times the square root of x plus 3, which leaves me with 2 times x plus 3 plus x all over 2 times 
the square root of x plus 3. So f prime, I guess I can put in there that f prime of x. So I get 2x plus 6 plus x all over 2 times the square root x plus 3. So f prime of x is 3x plus 6 all over 2 times x plus 3. Now, f prime of x, I'm going to do some simplification if, if you would, would allow it. I'm going to factor out a 3 from the numerator and a, and a 2 from the denominator, so it leaves us with x plus 2 times or divided by the square root of x plus 3. So now we use the quotient rule. Take this 3 half as being fixed. So it's the derivative of the numerator, which is 1, times our denominator, which is the square root of x plus 3, minus the numerator times the derivative of our denominator, which is 1 half times x plus 3 to the negative just to the one half, excuse me. Well, that derivative, it would be to the negative one half. The derivative of the square root of x plus 3 is one half times x plus 3 to the one half minus 1 is negative one half. Good. And this is all over our denominator squared, which is just x plus three. And simplify this. Just leave the three half sitting there. Okay. So this is the square root of x plus three minus x plus two all over that square root times the two. So this is x plus 2 all over 2 times the square root of x plus 3. This is all over x plus 3. When I picked this problem, I didn't know it was going to be this long. So we're going to combine these two fractions here, so we're going to multiply to this term 2 times the, the radical, and then divide it by 2 times the radical, which leaves us with 2 times x plus 3. Now the numerators are the same. This is minus parentheses x plus 2. Our denominators are the same, excuse me. This is over the common denominator, 2 times the square root of x plus 3, and it's over x plus 3. So here we get 3 halves times, this is 2x plus 3, so 2x minus x leaves me with the x there, and this is 6 minus 2, so I have a plus 4. And <clears throat> this is all over 2 times x plus 3 to the 3 half power. All right. So if you set the second derivative equal to 0, this implies that 3 over 2 times x plus 4 over 2 times the x plus 3 to the 3 half power is set to equal to 0. You multiply both sides by that denominator and uh, divide through by 3. That would leave you with x plus 4 equal to 0. That implies x is equal to negative 4. 
of which on the number line becomes useless to this particular problem. Because notice here that this problem has a domain The domain values go from negative 3 to positive infinity. Negative 4 is right to the left of negative 3. So all that crap, don't want to say for nothing, but anyway. Um, so here, note that x equal to negative 4 is not in the domain of f, right? Because again, the domain is from negative 3 to positive infinity because of the, of the radical of the, the square root of x plus 3. So what do we do? Well, there is another value uh, critical value for the second derivative, and that's when uh, we have discontinuity. So f double prime is not differentiable at x equal to, you see that downstairs? This x plus 3 downstairs at x equal to negative 3. So we test about it. So now we test and partition the number line based on x equal to negative 3. Okay. So what about from negative, infin negative infinity to negative 3 and then from negative 3 to positive infinity? And we're looking at f double prime. Now here it's not applicable because the domain for f uh, is does not is not on the interval anything less than negative three. the The domain is anything bigger than negative three or equal to to negative three. So you take a value bigger than negative three and you plug it into the <coughs> here to the second derivative. Now you got the little piece between negative four and negative three, but doesn't matter because you're not even dealing with numbers between negative 4 and neg negative 3 because of the domain. So if you take 0, uh, negative 2, 5, 10, 1,000, we get positive. So there are no points of inflection because the concavity does not change because we know nothing about the left side here, um, the left of negative 3. All we do know is that we have concavity upward uh, from uh, negative 3 to positive infinity. That's all we know. Well, let's move on, look at a few more problems. Hopefully it won't take us long. Um, oh, this is good. Use the second derivative test. Now, that's fun stuff. Find all relative extrema, and hopefully we can use the second derivative test, and we can get it done real quick. So let's see. We find f prime of x. That's equal to 6 minus 2x. You set this guy equal to 0. f prime equal to 0 implies that x is equal to, to 3, right? Now let's find f double prime. f double prime of x is equal to negative 2. <laughs> now, now here, here's a little neat method here. The concavity, this says that the concavity is always downward.
concavity is always downward. If concavity is always downward, then watch this. Um, I got a, a maximum at x equal to 3. <laughs> right? It doesn't matter for what value of x you pick for the second derivative because they're all going to be negative. But the point in particular is that critical point here. At x equal to 3, f double prime at 3, doesn't matter what value you pick, we always get negative 2. So here, that lets us know this, this guy right here is less than 0. The concavity is downward. We have a relative maximum. At x equal to 3. Now, when x is 3, f of 3 is 6 times 3 minus 9. So we get 9 there. And so that is at 3, comma 9, we have a relative maximum. That's all. The next one, f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 6x. You set this guy equal to 0. So this implies that we have, so you factor out a 3x. That leaves us with an x minus 2 equal to 0. That implies that x equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. Find the second derivative. Now it's neat when the second derivative works out just fine. This is 6x minus 6. Alright, so f double prime at 0 is equal to negative 6. Negative for the second derivative means the concavity is downward, so I have a relative maximum. x equal to 0. That point in particular is 0 comma 3. And what about f double prime at 2? You plug in the critical values from the first derivative into the second derivative to determine uh, the extrema. That's the second derivative test. Very easy. So here we have 12 minus 6. You don't really care about the number. You just, you care about the sign. This is equal to 6. It's positive, right? It's positive. Concavity is upward. That means that we have a relative minimum. Right. At x equal to 2. Now, f of 2 is, this is 2 to the third. Minus 3 times 2 squared plus 3. So this is 8, 4, minus 12, plus 3. So you get negative 1. So at the point 2 comma negative 1, we have a relative minimum, right? Okay, one more. So f prime of x is equal to 4x to the third minus 12x squared. We set this guy equal to 0, solve for x. You can factor out a 4x squared. We have left x minus 3. Set to equal to 0. That implies that x is equal to 0 and x equal to 3. Find the second derivative. We get 12x squared minus 24x. 
Now you plug in f double prime at zero, you get zero. Uh oh. Here the test fails. It failed for x equals zero. That is the second derivative derivative test failed. Let's go ahead and try the next one, f double prime at three. We got two critical values. So this is twelve times three to be squared minus twenty-four times three. So we get twelve times nine minus seventy-two. This number is that one over eight. Minus seventy-two. Looks like that's thirty-six. Okay. Anyway, it's positive. That's all you care. It's positive, so it means the concavity is upward, right? So if the concavity is upward, that means I have a relative minimum. at x equal to 3, you get the function value for that. You plug in 3 up here for x, we get negative 25. So 3 comma negative 25 is our relative minimum. Now, since the first, well, the second derivative test failed at x equal to zero, you have to use the first derivative test to see what happens at zero, right? So we have negative infinity to zero, zero to three. We know we know what happens around three. F prime. So look at f prime. I'm going to use this guy right here. So anything less than zero, plug it there. Let's say negative one is that is um, positive, and this is negative. So this is negative. Take a number between zero and three. Let's just say one. Plug the one there. We get positive. We get negative. And then anything we know here that it's going to be positive because <clears throat> we have a relative minimum at three anyway. But you can go ahead and just test it. Take the number five, positive, positive. Right. Notice that at x equals zero, you do not have an extrema. So here, no. extrema at x equals 0. 3, negative 25. It's the only extrema, right? And it was a relative minimum for the extrema there. Well, I've held you long enough. Thank you.